I feel like we've the discussions that we've had, the four hour discussions we've had. So well, you know we've already done like two, three pods. They yeah, were just on the iPhone. Yeah, yeah, we just wasted it. Yeah. Um, guys, you wanted me podcasting again, and here I am. But I'm joined by two very unique gentlemen. To my left, we have A League champion and now social media superstar Rashid Mahazi. Let's give it up for him, man. Come on, Rash. Bring it in. Bring it in. Lord Mahazi. Sorry. Check by that. now, his name is Lord Mahazi. Why Lord Mahazi? Um, it's a funny story, but basically the Victory fans used to take the piss out of me um, <laughs> and, and, and call me Lord Mahazi and I've just adopted it now as my, my social media persona. And I think it suits me, to be honest, as well, because I am the Lord well, you and give, I'm Mahazi. You give off Lord vibes, like, you know, you're a leader, yeah. you're a bit of a Lord. Lord is one of the worst take the piss out of someone names because it's like, it's not even that bad. You I know, I don't, it's, it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Um, but it does. It like I've never heard anyone be called Lord in a serious way. <laughs> Have you? There's one guy, and when I brought him up, you didn't know who it was. But <laughs> Scott Disick, who was he was the first Lord I ever saw. Who is? Who, who is, is Courtney Kardashian's first husband? Oh, or whatever. that guy's hilarious. I feel like yeah. also Jerome, right? Knowing Rashid. There's one man that can pull off Lord. It's Rash. It's Rash. And that's I mean, why I brought the suit today. That's why I brought the suit. Yeah. Suited and booted. To my right, we have a man that, well, he, he's, he's ESL, basically. English second language. <laughs> um, he speaks better Spanish than he does English, so tranqui. He spent pretty much his whole teenage life at one of the biggest clubs in South America, River Plate. And he's back now. He's an NPL champion. He's back on the pitch with Thunder this year. That's Give it up for Gavin Danese, a.k.a. Gezim. Woo! Thank you. Thank you, boys. The two-footer. The two-footer. That's what I'm known for. And also looking for an English teacher, if there is out there. <laughs> um, we'll definitely oh, catch are. that up. Okay. Catch that up on the pod. You'll get, get to know me more. And um, you know my English is definitely not my first language. Yeah. Oh, fu- funny, funny story. Funny story. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Yeah. But when we when we are in Argentina, mm. people genuinely think he's lying when he says he's not from Argentina. Is your Spanish because of the way good? that he speaks? I'm gonna I'm gonna Genuine. give you a quick update. Last night, I'm out for dinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> out for dinner. Where was he? This actually happened. Right. This yeah. actually happened. I'm at yeah. street with takes. who? I'm we disclosed. Can, yeah. Yeah. No Can't name. Put that no out. name. Just okay, yet. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Just yeah. yet. It's too fresh to release any names. Okay. Anyway, out mm. for dinner, Sunday night. I think people can get the vibe what I'm doing on a, on a Sunday night, right? Yeah, okay. I'm at Street Taste in Preston. Very good. Very good. You know, good tacos. So anyone, if you want to t- yep. taste uh, Street Taste, it's good in Shout Preston. Street Taste. Big hike from my area, but it was Huge. worth it. Okay. Anyway, lady comes to the table to serve me straight away. I know straight away if they're Spanish speaking, right? <laughs> So she starts talking. They smell the, before they even speak. Yes. You can, you just, you can feel the accent, mm. right? Yeah. I go, de donde sos? Which is? What are you doing here? And no. She, <laughs> and, she, and she said, sorry, sir. Yeah. <laughs> de donde? <laughs> sorry, sir. Donde is English? where? De donde sos? <laughs> de donde s- something where? Mm. Something. Where are you from? Where are you from? No, mm. that's what I said. All right. Mm. Peruvian. Surprised me. Ooh. So then I roll into the Spanish straight away. My Spanish. Mm. And she goes... Ah, so Argentino, which means oh, you're Argentinian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? What Rash just said. My Spanish is so fluent. So Argentine mm. or Porteño, which is like you're from Buenos Aires, mm. um, that it's like automatically people think I'm Spanish or Argentinian, really. You know when I knew he was ESL? The other day we went to uh, this <laughs> place in Dandy. I forgot. It was Sugar on Tap. Sugar on Tap, yeah. And he points at the menu and he goes, bro, what's a waffle? <laughs> Oh my God. I said, sorry, cuz. And he said, bro, what, what's a waffle? I said, it's a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I've never seen one of those. And I'm thinking, this guy ben, when is we, a fob. <laughs> when we message, I don't know whether he's getting the order correct, like whether he's misspelt something or he actually doesn't know. <laughs> That's Siri, how I got wait, to make. Siri, Siri, Siri <laughs> always really? does me. Yeah, you know why? Because you text with the, with the voice to text. I know. Do you? Yes. Yeah. And my keyboard's just getting confused. We've got Spanish in there, Portuguese. Hold on, wait. Why are you doing that though? It's just easier. You mean why? You mean while you're driving or something? Allegedly. Or are you just like always allegedly, allegedly yeah, while you're allegedly. driving? Or do you mean we can't say that? 
<laughs> do, you, do you mean when you're at home? If you're sitting at home on your bed, you would depends use your voice? How, depends time, date, where. But this is, this is why, no, this, in terms of like, okay, the way he speaks is Argentinian, but g- genuinely, the way he behaves, the things he does, everything oh, about yeah. him is more Argentinian than yeah. Aussie. Even like, like he sends like voice messages yeah. as opposed to texting way more. Actually, you do the same thing now that I Yeah, you know why? Because I, I, I don't shut up. Yeah. So I got so much to say that yeah. I feel like, you know what? Listen to this on two times speed. Yeah. I'll give mm. you 30 seconds. It'll be so much info. You won't be able to control yourself. And then it's better than <laughs> sitting there going, da, 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 yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's yeah. why I do it. But Gav's foreign. He'll get there yeah. with we'll the English. There. What He'll year did there. you finish school? Genuinely, I, I can't remember. school, but I left you school in 2010. How, year what year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your English would be year eight level, I think. Actually... Yeah. Year eight. Year, yeah, maybe year eight. But you make up for it in other areas, bro, don't we you do. think? We're, you it's know? about life, isn't it? I'd rather, I'd rather have year eight English and be trilingual yeah. than know two words in Spanish and speak English. Yeah, yeah. Like he I has do. life education. Yeah. He's got life He's got education. Life, yeah. And listen, allegedly, everything, everything on this podcast, it's all a conspiracy theory at the end of the day. <laughs> allegedly, it's better to get girls because you have three languages. <laughs> Why are they coming into it? Stop. Oh. It's not your whole personality or anything. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's just a fact of life that if you're a trilingual, mate, you can go anywhere. Yeah, we, we open open the gates a bit more. Wait, who is this guy? Have we even got into who yeah, he is? We've seen, we given need, his name. That's it. And we need oh, the Marte going soon. Okay, I said he spent his uh, life... Oh, you did? Before. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, cool, cool, sorry. Again, guess him because now he's Albanian. That's it. Now, before we pull out the Marte and give you guys a bit of a tutorial while they are... We're going to give you guys, this episode is just a little bit of a get to know us, you know, intro. We're not going to do, go too crazy because I'm telling you right now, the stories we have in store, the guests we have planned, and the overall tomfoolery that will happen on this podcast is going to be second to none. There's a lot of football podcasts out there. I love a lot of them. They're all doing their thing, but everyone's different. We're going to go for a different approach. So it is obviously based around football. This podcast is going to be based around football, but we're going to be touching on the things that other people might be a little bit afraid to, might be a little bit personal, on and off the pitch. So we're talking dating as a footballer, partying as a footballer, <laughs> business, money, <laughs> um, everything. Well, the whole, the whole constant question, I feel like, for everyone listening, that we've been going back and forward with is, how much can we actually say and do we want to say and yeah. how quickly? Because yes. these some of these stories are borderline. Borderline. <laughs> borderline court There's case. A <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on, but it's good. It's good, it's good oh. information the world needs to hear. I think that's it's important. It is important. It's, yeah. real. it's real. And life. I think, you know, life. obviously we're not going to try to dig anyone out or whatever. We are really going to try to stick by our rule of uh, no names, no age, no location. So anyone out there that's trying to, good luck. I'm lawyered up. <laughs> He's literally right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this episode was just to sort of get to know us. I know you guys have seen a lot of Rash. You've seen a lot of Dino. <laughs> the NPL knows who Gav is. He's been around the block in the NPL. But you're going to get to know us as the people, not just, you know, the under-13s D-League champ. That's it. And the f- and the funny thing is that we're actually also getting to know each other. We l- we literally met Jermaine, Jermaine <laughs> aka Jermaine. Dino, aka Jerome, <laughs> Jermaine Defoe. <laughs> we met him which was what three weeks ago, probably yeah, about three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So I, do you want to give a backstory yeah. how we met, Gav? You give yeah. a backstory. So basically, what happened? I'm on TikTok, right? Rash blown up, you know, and he goes, Rash, Lord, sorry, L- Lord. sorry, Lord, Tro- Lord in Spanish. What is that? Isn't it Ray? Ray. Yeah. El pastor. <laughs> <laughs> the priest. <laughs> um, so basically, <clears throat> I've become big. Foot volley, you know. Football's a thing. Mm-hmm. Foot volley's my new love. Let's be of course, honest. You know, same. Altinia, the, the so I'd, I'd almost go as far as you are starting to like foot volley more than normal football. I think I've Would that had be that true? conversation with Jerome. Jermaine, sorry. <laughs> quite often. <laughs> the... The amount that you talk about football league in comparison to football is The amount of reels I send to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's definitely he not about. Said, he also sends <laughs> random videos that are in Spanish or Portuguese to Jerome that Jerome has no idea what it me- like. Not none of it means. Did Jermaine ever play in a um, non-English speaking country? Defoe? Yeah. Nah. No. Nah. 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 It, nah. <coughs> Can't believe I'm Rangers, named after I think. a Tottenham legend. Um, <laughs> No, he played. Uh, he played Rangers. He played Toronto, and then he played in England. And Sunderland I, th- a bit, I think that's yeah. it. Yeah, Sunderland, uh, Portsmouth, all that. But um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, do you want to do you want to start from how so I met yeah, you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, right, go so basically, me. you know, Rash has done done well on TikTok. He keeps going well. I get on it with him. You know, we're growing together. That's what we do together. Um, since we met each other, since we the first time I think we met on the pitch, I was probably thirteen. Rash is four years older than me. I think. Ended up on a plane, living with each other, basically just always bounced ideas off each other, right? So I start doing the TikTok, you know, foot mm. volley vibes. Mm. I get a comment from uh, Jerome Music dot one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, just Jerome dot music. Follow. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> jump on there. Uh, where can I buy these Mikasa balls? Mikasa balls, for anyone that doesn't know, are probably the most unique ball In the that world. you can feel. Yes, like, I've yeah. never touched a football like that, you know? I got excited. One of a kind. We all know what one of a kinds are. There's not many around. What, what would we say? In between a soccer ball and a, soccer ball and a volleyball? Yeah. yeah, it's a weird... It's not the same as a volleyball. No, no. Anyone that hasn't touched the Mikasa ball, it's going to change your life. Like a if bag you of are, sand. Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> hey, when I, when I first met him and I got to touch it, I was like... Yes. Like I was like, oh yes. my God, my touch is going to be perfect yes. now. I had this feeling. <laughs> I had this feeling. It does make you actually feel yeah, like yeah. you're a better player. Yeah. Um, which a lot of people need out there, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Including myself. Anyway, um, get that. And, and I, I just said, Jerome, listen, this is where you can get them. You know, they're really big in Brazil, growing. They're from Japan originally, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, linked him up. And then he goes, you know, when can I come down? I had a tournament happening that weekend, I think. First ever tournament, Melbourne Foot Volley tournament in um, Mordialic. Yes, sir. Jerome come down, filmed a bit, and uh, hit it off from there, man. He's he's been in love with foot volley. I've been training him. Well, he doesn't really do the trainings; so he just comes <laughs> for the games. But yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that's how it goes, you know. Yeah. Boys but hey, boy. the touch is good, bro. The touch is good, bro. It's it got, is. Can it's we get some footage in this? Or yeah, yeah. I'll throw oh, some footage okay. in. We can put uh, here. I can maybe put uh, the, little, the little rally me and you had. Yeah. Um, it's gotten better for sure, but people don't understand that. Like to play foot volley, like it's uh, it's hard on the body. Yeah. Like your feet get hot. There's shells. It's you're trudging through sand. Like then your touch has to be decent. I think this Ma- is maybe. why. This is why I love it. Right. Yeah. Is because. To be good, it's such a, it's so much more slower 100%. than football. You can kind of get away with different things. Yeah. If you're fast on the sand, yeah, you're not gonna, you're gonna be the same speed as you. Let's <laughs> yeah. be honest, right? And I'm just like, no one's, slower. no one's fast on sand. Maybe, yeah. maybe give, give the people an insight into what foot volley is, where it comes from, and like why. Because for me, yeah, if you're a footballer, probably you should be playing. I'll tell you, hundred percent. I feel like, <clears throat> okay, it's from Brazil, right? Me and Rash went to Brazil two years ago, coming up to two years. Um, and it's everything you see online. There is balls everywhere. And the beach is just every five to ten metres, it's just Mikasa ball, Mikasa, Mikasa. Mikasa, Mikasa balls Mikasa, and Mikasa, Bundes. You know? just Yes, that's it. You know, it's Mikasa and that. Yeah. Everything that, that we love. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so me and Rash were basically in heaven. I did lose <laughs> Rash. We can go in that another day. But Fell I did lose him. him. As you do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened, you know? Mm. Anyway. Um, and the reason why I think it's so important in football is because it's so different to juggling and it also relates so much to football and being able to use all parts of your body, right? Um, anyone that, you know, knows football, knows Brazilians, they can do anything with the ball. Mm-hmm. And anyone that's grown up or been to South America can tell why they're so good at that game and why it's so natural. Like, me and Russia were playing with, you know, 13-year-olds, playing with 50-year-olds, 60 men, women, and everyone can play. Like, you would think they wouldn't be able to, and then you throw them, like, you go play Altinia with them, or foot volley, and they're, like, dropping low shots on you. They're playing long, using the chest, 
scorpion behind the behind the head, and you're just mm. going, how, how? And these are like, they don't even play football, yeah, right? No. Mm. Where you just expect in Melbourne or in Australia, you just expect people to have those touches because they're footballers. Where like yeah, you could just 100%. get a random off the street, mm-hmm. throw them the ball, and then just go bang chest. <laughs> but even <laughs> you know? but even Argentina or probably all of South America, it's all. Football tennis yeah. is, I feel like, where the yeah. touch is coming from. Yeah. yeah. Genuinely, yeah? yeah. Like, every training session, before every single yeah. training session, all the boys, football tennis, football yeah. tennis, football tennis. We went back like, two years ago, yeah. same trip. The eight-year-olds, football tennis, yeah. football tennis, football tennis. And I think the difference, the main difference, and why I love foot volley, is because here in Australia, we're always taught to juggle, right? Mm. Juggle the ball. But it's different because when you're playing foot volley, you're actually passing the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's yeah. related to the game. So anyone really can juggle. Well, not really, but... No, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's your, you ha- the ball is under control. When, you're, when the ball's coming in football, the ball is not under control. You have to make the ball yeah. do what you want to do. Yeah. Oh, there's so many people I know that are decent footballers and then they'll try it and they'll be like, what the fuck? Like, I can't do yeah. this. And I'm just like, well, you're not Brazilian. Go play. Yet. All right. I'm <laughs> putting it out there. Play Altinha at MPL level. And it's going to be shocking. Any team, I can tell you that. Yeah, probably. You know why? Because I've done it with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Name names. <laughs> and I'm playing two touch. I'm playing two touch. And I'm going, bud, you're on a good a good wicket here. Yeah. And you're struggling playing yeah, two yeah, touch yeah. with Hold me. on. You're on two grand and you, can't, <laughs> and you can't chest the ball to me? That's crazy. So. <laughs> but yes, we got off top. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, and that's going to happen, boys. Troll, just this is troll. Volante yeah, yeah, Central, yeah. centre midfielder, number yes. six. But it's okay. Who's turning us back on track. Sometimes it's good to go off off the beaten path. Um, so, back to it. I think I came down as Gav, as, Gav, as Gav said, met, kicked it off, whatever. And then I found out he was friends with Rash, who I obviously knew because I was a Victory fan, but not personally. And he goes, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm best mates with Rash. You know, we ran a muck in, uh, in South America. <laughs> I said, oh, and he said, yeah, he's going to come down to foot volley. I said, oh, cool, I'll come meet him. So I went to the next one and I meet Rash. He's seen my TikToks, I've seen his. And then I sort of said to Gav, and this is in the week of knowing Gav, I said, man, you and Rash would be good on a pod. Because me and Gav went to the beach one day and it was like six hours of him telling me all these wild stories from his career. And I was like, bro, this would be sick on a pod. And then... Gav brought it up to Rash, and Rash is like, well, yep, pretty much. I'm doing this content stuff. It ties in. And within three to four weeks, we sort of just – it was pretty seamless. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty well, seamless. Me, like, as soon as he said it to me, I was like, is that the guy that does the <laughs> MPL <laughs> videos? Yeah. Because, okay, so for a little bit more backstory, my uh, sister actually knows Jerome as well, yes. so – there's kind of a connection there, but she had sent me this video, which is probably your most fam- most yeah, well known video. Most famous, you can say famous. Most, the most <laughs> famous video, which everyone in the MPL world probably knows. Probably, at this yeah, point. probably. Yeah. So, which is the one where he's pretending to be Dino Jurakovic's yes. main character, and I had seen this video, and genuine, it's for me to find something funny is so hard. It is very, very hard for me to find a person funny, and I was like, this guy, he has something, and I was Thanks, like, as soon as he said that, I was like. Done. Yep. Done. Because you were saying that you had maybe plans or to like go on other pods or like maybe do one, but you you felt like that it needed to be the right person for your... Man, I was... So what was what I was doing was I, the last couple of years, I've gone so hard in marketing. Like I fell in love with the, the whole world of marketing. Yeah. Social media side of that as well is part of it. Well, but let's, just well, marketing bro, in let's, general. Let's get into that. Let's, let's okay. get into... Why, after you finished playing, you got so heavy into marketing and social media? Wow. It's just happened organically. Basically, we started the soccer academy and no one was coming. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so no one was coming. And we had... we My role in the... I have two other partners, so my brother and Luke Jago, that do the soccer academy beyond technique football school. We do it all together. And we were like, we've got the best service here or product or whatever. Mm-hmm. No one's coming though. For the first eight, nine weeks, it was two kids, me and two kids. And we're like, damn, we've got this methodology we've been working on for two years, me and Luke. And we can't, no one thinks like 
no one's able to see that it's actually a good program because the marketing's not good. Right. So okay. it, so I the, so I started going a little bit deeper on that and working out how to how to market it for the soccer academy at that point. And then throughout that process, I've also got now we've got another thing that we me and Gav are doing together, another business separate, that uh, that is more product based than service. And I've got a mentor that I was talking to about oh, how do we how do we start to market this thing? And she said to me, she goes, Rash, you've got like 15 photos on your Instagram <laughs> at the moment. Like, why are you not optimizing your, your yeah, social like media? Take platforms? your top off and take a photo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at my account. Yeah. <laughs> Put some speedos on. Like, come on, it's not it's not hard. So so what happened was I had this because while I was playing, I never wanted to post. I was I had and I still have it now this you know what I'm losing it? The feeling of, I don't want to show myself. I don't want to show myself. Yeah. I don't want to put stuff out there. I just, just want to, to drift you in under there. the... Hey? Just to cut Rash off real quick about this and a footballer and not wanting to post. Mm. Honestly, it's possibly the worst thing you can do. Yeah, yeah. Why? I'm not going to cut Rash off, but we can get back to it. Okay. Oh, but we'll come back to that because it's an interesting you, yeah, point. Yeah, It's okay. so important. Okay. And it's a hard one though, but yes. it's, a, it's a big conversation. Yes. It's a big mm-hmm. conversation. Very big conversation. Um... And, but yeah, so, so for me, well, my side of that was like, I didn't want to be posting while I was playing was I didn't want to be posting and then you have a bad game or you do something yeah. wrong and then everyone's like, oh, it's because you're posting or like uh, you're not focusing on your football, right? Yeah. The, that whole thing. But then once I stopped playing, I, I had the freedom to post, but I, I was kind of in an egotistical way, like a narcissistic way. I want to just, I want to be successful and do my own thing, but without... Sh- being showy so it's the opposite side of ego right like people say oh you're narcissistic because you post so much mm-hmm. you're also narcissistic because you are high like you're trying to act so humble mm. do you know what i mean you're <laughs> you're super yeah. humble that you don't show anyone anything yeah. so much to the point where you sacrifice some of your success yeah right anyways and that's what she said to me she goes rash how how serious about your goals are you i said very serious she, she goes well either you post or you don't like as simple as that. Either you post or you're not serious about your goals. Yeah. I was like, suck it up. As, 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 as uncomfortable as it feels to post, which it was, I did this 100 posts for 100 days challenge and That's did crazy. that and did it for like 80 days, got nothing out of my Instagram. I think I genuinely lost followers over that period. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, one of my friends messaged me on, on Instagram on day 80. She goes, Rash, stop everything you're doing. Move it on TikTok. You're wasting your time on Instagram. Did it on TikTok straight away, boom. Like the video, this was maybe five, I did it after like maybe five days of doing TikTok. That video now has like 200, 2 million views or something. So that was five days in comparison to 80 days on Instagram. You have the, one of the, I should say, quickest growing TikToks I've ever seen. Because when I first met you, you had less followers than me and now you've nearly tripled them. And that was like two weeks, three weeks ago. The fa- yeah. Like you have moved so quickly, but you post a lot. Yeah. So there's a lot to catch fire. Wow, that, that's the thing. Like said I was 100 posts for 100 days, but <clears throat> wasn't actually that. It get to, got to the point where I was doing four posts a day. Damn. Minimum, minimum. So I was like, had quotas for myself that I had to hit for followers, like views or whatever. And if I wasn't hitting those views, then I'd have to post again. Like that is just like a rule that yeah. I have for myself. And then, and then also just through that, I've realized now in hindsight, looking back, Far out. I've learned a lot just by getting the reps in and you know man I've got this formula now and Best this, formula. it's very <laughs> it's very strategic I try to obviously keep it as natural as possible and authentic but there is a very strategic like there's a plan there's not I'm not just randomly posting stuff there's there's a reason everything is posted and um and I feel like I'm maybe just now the last three weeks I kind of get it now. I yeah. kind of get social media. And that's after freaking 400 reps probably we're at now. Yeah. I'm doing it's four a game, posts a day, bro. 150 days now. Like it's, it is luck, but then it's also, you've got to just be in it to win it. I know it's cliche, but like you just got to keep showing your face all the time. And that's funny coming from a person that didn't want to post and didn't want yeah. to be out there and said, Oh, you yeah. so oh brother. Ugh. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. social media. And Ugh. I used to make fun of people. Yeah. I used to send if someone was posting something cringy, I would send it to other people like, look at this. Yeah. Loser. Look at this dickhead who thinks yeah. he played NPL. And, <laughs> and then and then now I'm just like, you know what, man, if you're getting after it, 
which is what I'm doing. I'm just getting after it. And, and I'm getting that. I'm getting people laughing at me. I'm getting people making fun and getting people say, stop doing that. Like people that are close to me being like, have, have genuinely muted my account so that my posts don't come up. People close to you. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. It's part of it. You know, it's part of it, man. When you try to, when you put yourself out there, you're going to get people that like haters and you're going to get people, haters that are like, you don't know. And then you're going to get haters that are people super close to you. you charge it to the game, man. It That's is what, what it is. is. Like even with me, some, I look back at some of the stuff I post and think, what the fuck were you doing? Yeah, but bro, then, you have that for yourself as well. Yeah. You look at your own video, you're like, look at this loser. Yeah, like, uh, I and, and it, all it takes is like a week. I'm like, why did I post that? Or my brother will walk in yeah, going, yeah. my brother will walk into the lounge room going, yeah, that one didn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, I'm just comedy, like, okay, fuck you. Bro, yourself. comedy, I, I think is the hardest job in the world. I think of like, it is. it's so awkward when I'm not something a comedian, isn't by the way. funny. <laughs> but to get, the, the, to get someone to laugh is the most natural instinctual uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. You can't fake a laugh. Nah. Impossible. No. I was last night at this event. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but people can tell, you know what I mean? And it's like to get someone to laugh, like that is props to you, man. Because if you're posting, that's proper putting yourself out there. Yeah, it's hard. Doing it's humor hard. and putting yourself out there for humor. If it doesn't hit, you're like, oh Bruh. my God. Because there's this classic TikTok quote. Um, yeah, that's min. I'll post it. Like people comment that as a smart ass way of saying, wait a minute. So you filmed this, watched it back and thought, oh my God, I'm hilarious. Let me go post it. Right, right, So right, if you right. ever see, yeah, that's mint, I'll post it. Right, they're taking right. the piss. <laughs> that's, they're taking the piss out of you. Hey, hey, this is a new, this is also a funny thing. Like the whole world of TikTok, you wouldn't, uh, like the lingo. There's, there's TikTok lingo yeah. that I am not across. People sending me skulls. Like my friend was, he, he part of his, <laughs> his new hobby is to read the comment section, me talking to people, being like, what does that mean, bro? Why? And like taking things seriously when they're bro, misinterpreting I'm them. not going to lie. <laughs> Someone said to me, I was reading Rush's comments and it's like in the comments, he doesn't know what people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, right. hold on, let me go look. And then there is a bunch where someone will say some like lingo or whatever. And you literally say, okay, what do you mean? <laughs> or like, right. okay, cool. Uh, what does that emoji mean? No shame though. Yeah. You're just learning. Because bro, we're in the, we're in the crossover generation. Yeah, the generation are, yeah. that weren't social media. We were just, yeah. we got half the, half a life of yes. normal life. Yeah. Then we got a half a life of social media. Yeah. So we're yeah. this crossover. We don't get it. I can't. Yeah, that's so weird because you, even as a player, I felt like you were a bit of, of a recluse. Like you're a bit sort of not in your shell, but you could tell. I could just tell that okay, this guy likes to keep his private life just over there. He plays. That's it. He doesn't make a fool of himself. All of that. I'm not saying you make a fool of yourself now, but like you've come out and you're almost like gone the complete opposite direction of what you said. Like yeah. not wanting to post because social media is for losers. Yeah, and yeah. now it's like, well, look at the wonders it's doing for you. Yeah. And um, yeah, I guess like, I think that leads me to my next point that I wanted to bring up, which was um, Gav being at River Plate for what was it? Eight years? Six years. Six years. So 13 to... 13 to... 20. 20th, yeah. 13 to 20, right? Um, so you were there and... Social media, what was around? Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Twitter's big, always been big in Arge. Yeah. Um, Even when we were there? Yeah. Nah, bro. Yeah. There wasn't. Like just Facebook. starting. Facebook. Facebook at that MSN. time was it. MS yeah, Facebook MSN. And MSN. Legit. MSN, yeah. MSN. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, ja, ja. MSN. Got a great story off MSN. Anyway. <laughs> Wait, you've been you've been hunting since MSN days? Of course. Bro, that's why. Man, this guy has been the same since he was 12, bro. <laughs> I'm not joking, man. He was 12, I was what 16, and and we were like, who is this guy? Man? Yeah, cuz a 12-year-old he's got a beard already. He's got a beard. Um how how long is uh I mean, like a 12-year-old is um Sorry, boys. Talking to talking to our producer. Um, uh, a twelve-year-old in Arj is a different twelve-year-old oh. to an Aussie twelve-year-old. It's there's it's twelve-year-old in Arj yeah, is like a 
22 year old. <laughs> that's so cooked. Bro, I mean, but when, that's the culture. When, when, I, when I got there, went, was 16, went into an under 17s team. Six boys already had kids. Yeah. In that team. What? In the under 17s. Six boys had yeah. kids at that. At under 13s. There's, there's tats. It's there's normal. Piercings. There's tattoos. Yeah. yeah under 13s, yeah. there's yeah. tattoos. Yeah. There's boys already living at the club. You know? Yeah, living out of home. So, like I was saying, do you... Well, you've said this to me before. If you... Because you're a bit of an enigma. And, like, I'll give him his props now. I've got to get the mate going, by the way. Oh, I get the mate going. Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah get us some mate um, in. I need it. When you were younger in the southeast of Melbourne, you knew who Gav was. Like, there was maybe two or three players that everyone spoke about. And they were Anthony Carter... And Gavin Denise. We love Carter. Right? Shout out Carter. Hopefully we can get him on. We will. We will. So, everyone, even as me being under-13's D-League champion, <laughs> um, which was obviously probably my only championship I've ever won. Shouldn't have laughed at that. Sorry. I don't no. know why I laughed at that. Yeah, you shouldn't, <laughs> Sorry, laugh. you shouldn't laugh at that. All football is good football. That's true. I don't know you can laugh. I'm laughing. Um, you heard of Gavin. Oh, Gavin this, Gavin that. He's got the touch. He was actually, you know, because everyone said they played for River, but they didn't. They went for a trial in Dandy. I oh, know. Right, and we're going to do a whole epic reserve. <laughs> two hick reserve. Two hick reserve. sessions there, man. We're going to do a whole ep on academies and people yeah. saying they played for people and they didn't. But anyway, just because you got the shorts doesn't mean you played for them. It's just that simple. So everyone heard of Gav. Not many Australian kids are going to leave the country when they're, what, 13? Yeah, 13 was my first trip with uh, Rashid. Right. Um, 2009, September 17, I think. I remember wow. it off by heart. Can I just give you a quick story of how Gavin actually ended? Gazim was not yeah. even supposed to come on that trip. Yeah. Oh, Gazim. He was like a week before that you I ended was, up coming? I was, I was the product, right? You were the product. The, I was the young boy the coming producto. through. Yeah. yeah, the problem. El producto. El producto. Bro, so what happened was we were doing a training session. We had, there was four of us who were supposed to go. Me, Chris, um, Adrian Chipetta. One other boy. Um, and what happened was we were training, like preparing, doing runs, doing all this training. And there was a drill that we were doing before going, about a week before, yeah? I remember. It was, I was, it was like a week. Training. Yeah, yeah. And people passing the ball around. In, we're in like a little square box. People playing the ball around, dribbling, whatever, while also people are throwing med balls in oh, the right, same yeah. little area. And as you can imagine, at some point, a med ball connected with this player. He falls over, does his knee or something. So Gavin, so this where was a spot. It was booked. Everything was booked. Wow. So there was a spot that come up. Imagine that changed his whole life, right? And and I guess him can't speak English, can speak Spanish, <laughs> but it's because of because of literally that, that yeah. thing. So that you're telling so me that so Gavin would have joined my 13s D League team. Yes. Yeah, otherwise. If he didn't go to Arch. Yeah. So basically, what happened? It was always in the talks that I was going to go the year after after oh, those right. boys had that experience. Oh, they were already they were already pran, uh, yeah. planning for you to go. And then that happens. I still remember. Sorry. I was at the session. Um, really good, you know. We'd always train with the older boys. The younger boys jump in. That happens. And then I play that Friday night at Bulleen. Right. Shout um, out Venator Club. We play at Bulleen. And then we all get into the change rooms. And coach goes, by the way, just so you know, because of the injury, what happened? We're sending Gav to Argentina. Wow. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure like the turnaround was like 48 hours. I hadn't even had a passport, nothing. My That's dad behind right. the scenes that. had to get it all done because they didn't want to tell me. So I was still going to school at that time. Um, my dad's doing the passport in the background. Friday night happens. We fly out the next morning. And I miss three months of year seven. I was like buzzing. Like, so let me get this straight, right? And we, we weren't going to jump into it, but we're here, I guess. So you're 13 years old. You don't speak a lick of Spanish. You get told with 48 hours preparation time that you're literally packing up your whole life to go by yourself. Yeah. Technically, because no family were going. To Argentina, to one of the most interesting, bustling, sometimes dangerous cities in the world. And you spent six years there. So that's 2009, um, me, Rashid, Chris Kiosis, and Chipper, Aiden and Chipeta. So Chipper was the oldest, Chris and Rash, both 92 born. At that time, what, 16, Rash, 17? 
You guys must 16. have thought you were Same. sick cunts. <laughs> Bro, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what we thought at that time. But I just, like at that time, you there's like barely even internet to research like what's yeah. the go in Argentina. Yeah. Like what is Buenos Aires? Yeah, it was yeah. Kind All of you hard knew is just like context. Yeah. football, yeah. you know, yeah. like just players that are played there, you know? Yeah. But I think, I, I do think that the academy that we left from, which was River Plate Academy run by Daniel Santimo at that time, he was exceptionally good at giving you an understanding and a feeling mm. for what River Plate was yeah. ah. and what football means. Mm. What football can mean to people. And just the way he coached. Just the way he coached. That that when we got there was like, okay, we know this is like this is big. Like even though we didn't we'd never seen River Plate before, we kind of yeah. knew it was like you can feel okay, it. this is because I think if you stay here, there's no way of you understanding what football can mean to people. There's there's just no, no it's impossible. Way, man. No. Impossible. But he was no pretty good at translating that That's emotion like, and feeling yeah. like in training sessions. And, and like stuff. even till today, and I think we had this talk the other day, Jerome, is like you know, anyone that knows me, I'm obsessed with football, right? Yeah. But the football that I live outside of Australia, I don't have the same feeling as I used to yeah. because the football is different. I can't explain well, it, but you have to live it to know. We, we literally had a, com- we had a conversation when we went to Argentina two years ago and we were like, oh, I remember what football is now. It was, I hadn't felt that mm. yeah. since I I'd left and I was like, Oh, I remember why I love it so much. Well, there's a reason right? away fans aren't allowed in. That should give you a nice barometer of what it means to people. There's a reason away fans aren't allowed in the stadium. There's a reason people die at games and stuff. Yeah, It's different. And when you come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, you do tend to put all your passion and love into what means the most to you, what's, what's been in your family for generations... We're talking over 100 years, I'm assuming. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Um, so, of course, it's going to be different over there, man. It's the way of life over there. Here, there's too yeah. many options. Over there, it's... it's You'd probably be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't like it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas here, it's different. But I don't want to go too much... Guys, just uh, FYI, I'm not, I'm not a Marte fan. You are. You are. It will be. We will get, we'll get the right brand Ga- Yeah, you know what? Gav ones is like the most intense Marte, like only for experienced drinkers. It's, it's, Gav it, drinks basically the, the brand that's laced with cigarette smoke. Well, it tastes like cigarette water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoever me. isn't on Marte's, like you, you're missing out. Let's be honest. I can't lie though. So I did what? have that cold one. Yeah, sorry. That Brazilian one. I'm like, I'm like a Uruwasha drinker. Uruwasha? Yeah. Hey, but, but on that, on just on the, the South America, we're going to do a trip and we're going to vlog it. 100%. We've already booked we're gonna, it. We're going to vlog 100%. it. 100%. I it's might booked. not come back. It's booked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't... If anyone... Like, I'll say now, if anyone <laughs> like, wants to like, take my spot on the pod, like, it's up for grabs like because Jerome, I ain't come back. Jerome, if he wants to be smart, we'll kick it with Rash. If he wants to have fun, we'll come with me. <laughs> on the trip. And I hate fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Rash. Hey, can you tell them the story about... Because we were, we were messaging the other day and I was like... I was, I was spiralling in excitement of what, <laughs> what we could get out of our content journey, which is basically like... I'm thinking we're, we're vlogging games, going to mm. meet the meet the butter, butter Brava, which is like the ultras, right? Mm. And talk to them and vlog it because everyone out there, I, watch, I do watch Spanian. I love his in the hood talks. I watched his Melbourne one the other day. Mm. Yeah, dandy. So we want to do. I want to do the football version, but which we'll do NPL too. But I was like, we got to meet the Butter Brava. And what did you say about the victory fans? The victory fans, <laughs> uh, in terms of like what we tell me a story. Oh, yeah. So I'm not going to say which group because I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm scared. I'm not saying it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, yeah, when I was younger, because I was sort of telling Rash, I mean, he was a player, so he obviously knew that we the Victory has the best active support in Australian history. Um, so he knows, like, obviously. But being a fan is different. And obviously I was in the terrace. Like, my cousin used to drum for the terrace. So I was at oh, every game. Yeah, yeah. So I was at every game. During Rush's peak is when I was probably going the most. Um, Which was the peak of the league, we would say. Uh, I reckon the peak was, in terms of like f- like fandom, I reckon it was just a little bit before your time. Brisbane. But Brisbane. Like Brisbane dominating that. that yeah, that maybe period. I'd say around that era. Like that's when like mm. the derbies were getting like, you know. I mean, even your time, the derbies were getting 40-50. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, had, yeah. um, I think you might have been on the tail end of like the good A-League days. 
um, for a fan. Anyway, yeah, I was just at the train station once and um, you ob- they're the notorious group and I've seen them and one of them has just come up to me and just staunched the shit out of me and I shit bricks, bro. And I'm like, I'm a victory fan. Like, I'll show you my membership. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm pulling out my membership and all that. And he's, the, other, the other boys were saying, ah, don't worry about him. He's, you know, he's had a few or whatever he was yeah. doing. And me and my mates were shitting out. I think I was 15 or 16. We oh, were shitting out. That was bro. ages ago. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Wait, how old are you now? See, I don't even know I'm how 21. Old. No, you're not. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, nah, I'm 28. <laughs> I'm 28. So how was that 15? How long was it? Yeah, probably it was like probably uh, two thousand, like early twenty oh, yeah. tens, early twenty tens. Oh, okay, something like that. Oh, so before my, you did say before my time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so I was like, oh my god, like I and I just went into that game thinking, oh, I hate victory. <laughs> 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 like I don't want to support the team that people are staunching in my own fan base. I was pussy. I still am, but I don't care. Like whatever. Oh god. And then um. And don't then worry, don't I, worry, we'll I'll get you some experience. Yeah, I know. I need to go to the barrios. <laughs> and I'll, after yeah. that game, I was thinking, do I even support this team anymore? <laughs> if Byron fans hate me. But it was just some guy off his head, like skits in it. <laughs> oh, right. Man. And, um, but yeah, they're the real deal. They're probably the best active group in Australia. I would say all was when yeah. they weren't getting like all these, you know, bands and all that. But um, yeah, I know it's just, I was saying a rash, like, we could even speak to people here, the fan groups here. Obviously, it's not the same as it used to be, but it's still very, very interesting to get insight. It's just if they want to speak or not. Um, yeah. But let us know. Yeah, let us know if you're out there. We'll change your voice, and you can mask up, you can belly up, whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a robot voice, whatever you want. You can have whatever voice you want. But, AI. But it is very interesting. I was having a conversation today about like, does does the football need to come first, and then and then the fans will follow. Or should should the atmosphere come and like the there will be more participation, more money, more everything into the game, which will then bring the football up, right? Because like, okay, I watched the derby the other day mm-hmm. and didn't really excite me, if I'm honest, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of like, but I'm walking around being being saying to people, oh, we need to support the game more. I'd be a hypocrite if I then don't engage and watch the yeah. games and. Go yeah. to the games and, you know. It's all visual, bro. It's all visual and it's all, I, I guess, uh, what's what's the scientific term? It's visual and audio or like hearing or whatever the term is. So what I mean by that is when you watch a game on TV, the peak derby days, and you hear 50,000 people roaring and you don't see an empty seat in the stadium, you're going to be at home thinking, fuck, I think it's more... I wish I was there. I think Jerome from like my experiences overseas is like people go or like in Argentina, people live for that. Yeah, right? They live for the club. Yes. You know, and like I've spoken with like fans over there that their whole life is, is about that Sunday, mm, mm, you know? Mm, yes. So it's not about, it's not even about the football. It's okay. about the event. It's like that Which day. Very interesting that you say that, right? Yeah. Is because at the MPL level, you still have that kind of... The people that yeah. frequent yes. those games, yeah. even me personally, when I was a young kid, me and Jake, we used to go every second Friday mm-hmm. and it was an event. It was like Oakley yeah. Cannons, we go get the Suvlaki, we stand behind the goal, yell at Stuart Webster. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it was a thing every single 100%. second. I went sec- to every, every second single week, you know? South game as a youngster. You know, my and dad was a member since 98. And you, and you do, yeah. you, through the week, yeah. you're thinking, on the weekend, I've got that. I I'm, would. I'm so, that. used to be Bob Jane. Yeah. All right. Me and my best mate, we'd go to the grounds. Bob Jane play behind the old. Um, yeah. The goal. Stand. Oh, what was it? The well, they put the numbers on for the game. Scoreboard. What's that called? That's right. The yeah. Scoreboard. Right. Yeah. <laughs> told we'd play yourself. behind that <laughs> where there was like this little patch of grass. <laughs> yeah. Go downhill. That's where we'd play. You know, and well, that was yeah. that yeah. was like our thing. You know, and then there was, I think, Johnny A was in goals. Yeah. Um. Langarak was coming through at the time. Yeah, We'd wait, bitch. you know, for them, try and steal a few balls. Well, here's, a, like, here's a suggestion, right? So much, right? There is that. We don't have culture in any A-League teams, mm. right? Which is the big thing in, like, overseas. You've got history, you've got culture, you've Politics. got, like... You've got this feeling that's around each club, right? You've got River, that's the rich people. You've got the Boca, that's the, the poor people from yeah. different ends of the city. It's, it's, it's the colours, it's... 
the way they talk is slightly, you know, yeah. there's all these, you got Protest, like religious differences in in Scotland, for example. Let's bring Suvlakis into in Melbourne Victory Games. Well, bro, get them in the stands. The reason the you know, be in the stands. You know this, 100%. bro. The reason they started the A League was to stamp that out because, like everyone knows, the reason when NSL was okay, around, Rash, Nutman, the Nutman. Yeah, get the Nutman down at Amy Park. R.I.P. Bro. He was there. I know. He used to be there. Okay. No way. All the time he used to be there, bro. I didn't RIP. even know that. Get some more nuts. I mean, sorry, yeah. RIP. Yeah. But get also, get some more like, nuts. Get some more nuts. It was the best. I remember going to games. Yeah, but NSL and get some little touches that add a like, oh, that's what the victory game is. That's mm. street, a bit of street in there. Yeah. Rash, you know? You you guys know why, though, that's not happening. Do I because, need to do it? Well, you can maybe do it. We can make a Brazilian <laughs> club. But. Um, Imagine me walking around with nuts on my head. Just like in Argentina, <laughs> they've got the coca, coca. <laughs> you know, oh, those, that, that, what coke are you talking about? But even, <laughs> even, but even, bro, when we would get to the river games, they'd give you, all the kids, they'd give them bro, a newspaper. Outside. So you rip the newspaper up, when the when the players come out, you throw it up in the air and the whole yes. stadium does it, looks yes. mad, you know? Yeah. 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 On the seats, red, 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 white, white, white. white. Hold it yeah. up, and then it's all like red, white, red. You Big know, cre- creativity. Yeah. Okay. Again, I'm gonna be. I agree with you 100. percent I'm gonna tell you why that doesn't happen. It happen here. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't happen here. Number one, Australia is the best, safest country to live in. It's also one of the strictest in terms of what's allowed in stadiums, what fans can do. Rah rah rah. There was a stage where A League active support was cracking. You know, there was 10,000 of us at, at Southern Cross Station. You know, we'd march down. There was a culture. Like, there was some sense of a culture where every every weekend Victor were playing at home, I knew me and my mates were going to Oakley Station, we're going to get a feed from wherever, meet me, go to the game, take the bus back to 900 Caulfield, take it back. We'd be in the active area <laughs> the whole game, chanting. You know, my cousin's on the drums. I'm getting close to the important people. I feel cool. Like, you know, victory were top of their game. There was a little bit of a culture and the derby was awesome. But then all these rules came in. You can't do this. You can't do that. That person's banned. This is banned. Don't do this. Um, that area is, you know, sanctioned, whatever. Yeah. All this stuff came in. And you guys know the reason why they created the A-League was to make it inclusive. So you could be fat, bald, tall, gay, lesbian, Greek, Sudanese, whatever you wanted, you could be a Victory fan, which is great. I mean, anyone should be able to support whoever they want. But you know in the NSL, South Melbourne, you're probably Greek. Melbourne Knights, you're probably Croatian. Green Gully, what are they, Greek as well, Cypriot? But the hard thing about that, right, again, I'll go straight to marketing, right? Straight to marketing, which is like, if you're marketing to everyone, you're not marketing to no one, right? That's the marketing 101. Yes. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be inclusive of people, but like you have to have, people need to know. Like I look at, I need, I look at that club and I go, that's who that club is. Yeah. That's That's, what they represent. That's what they represent. That's, it's not just colors. It's got to be a whole thing around. Rash, you you played for, and as a Victory fan, although Victory is probably the best a league club in the history of the 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 league there is one club that tries at least to encapsulate the feeling of its fans and people and you played there yeah, and yeah. it was western sydney wanderers yeah 100% uh, the, the, the victory has a bit as well a little cuz of yeah. cuz of the success i think the history i think yeah cuz of the history i think victory has a bit as well western sydney for sure but like sorry to say but like central coast like what yeah. Uh, Tomato it's not, sauce. It's not, it's not, yeah, it's not like a. It's not like a. Uh, I'm saying anything bad about the people, but like no. the, the the marketing people, the yeah. branding people, yeah. like the business people behind that. Newcastle, same thing. Like, what is Brisbane? Like, what is that club? You think yeah. the only thing that I can think of about that club is the colours? Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, you, know, you got to look. And again, time is another big thing because A League's been around for what twenty years. So these clubs overseas in Europe and all of that, of course, those clubs were built off religion, politics, social standing, you know, everything. But the A-League, none of those clubs were built off any of that. The only one remotely close to it was that the West of Sydney was seen as working class, right? So 
they put a club out there and it was to rival the rich eastern suburbs Sydney FC. And it was to feel like the people from the West, which are, you know, mainly from immigrant families or ethnic backgrounds, it gave them something to support rather than the riches that lived in, you know, East Sydney and that would support the big powerhouse Sydney. Western Sydney was the only club that really, and they go hard, they, a lot of their um, marketing is like Western Sydney rappers, they do stuff in Western Sydney places, Parramatta and like, yeah. you know, all of that. That's where I think the Melbourne team screwed okay. up. That's, that's a perfect example. Music. Which club is attaching themselves to certain music and certain songs? I, I don't know. Like, you go to a river ba- a game, yeah. a six-year-old knows every single yeah. word to every single song. In that, and they sing it. Bah, 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 bah. There are look. There are vic- like again. It's all just on. It's all numbers. You know how many people live in Buenos Aires? I don't even know. It's probably. I, I think it's like forty three million. Okay, in the so whole country. So. Okay, so in a country like one seventh of the size of Australia or whatever it is, there's double the people. There's only one national sport, pretty much. You guys know it's split between codes, and and yeah. a lot of a lot of young, especially a lot of young ethnics, right, will go to Melbourne Victory for what they call what the young kids call. Let me put you boys on. It's called haps. They go because it's like, oh, it's a little bit rowdy. Right. I might be able to rip a flare. I can cause a little bit of mischief with my boys, but I don't love victory. I don't love the A League. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going because it's Saturday night, and there's there's a few girls going that I think are mad. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I go there and I act hard with my mates. But that there are diehard victory fans. Like, don't get me wrong. There are diehard A-League fans. But, like, a lot of the time it's people, like, flowing in and out of the game. They might go to three games and they get sick of it. How many people do you know? Oh, cuz, I used to love victory. I used to go, bro. But I don't know if I can go anymore, bro. It's fucking shit now. <laughs> Everyone I know says that to me. Dino yeah. Durakovic. Is well, Dino that. Dino was overseas making money, but it's <laughs> all my cousins and everyone has the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, I used to be mad. I used to be we were younger, bro. Like, what else are we gonna do when we're sixteen and we have no cars and stuff? Yeah. Now, like, you know, yeah. and these all play into it. Maybe in fifty years, the A League might be. Who knows? Like that culture might start seeping through, but it wasn't built. Off, it was built commercially. It wasn't built yeah, off um, uh, anything with substance. That's why a lot of the NPL clubs are like, ah, oh, fuck the A League. You know, I'm going to stay at South. I'll go down there, have my souvla. You know, all yeah. of that. So that's what I think is the main issue. And uh, guys, we didn't even plan to speak about this, but it was such a good topic. Like, yeah. you know, and we're only getting started with how much football means to people in Argentina. These boys played in Argentina, but not only Argentina, like we we didn't even get into where they played, but Rash has played in Korea. Gav's played in Portugal. He's gone on trial in England. Um, You know, Rash also was in Argentina, Independiente, different club as well. So we're going to get into all those things and how much it means and how different the cultures are. I can't wait to get into how different the Koreans are and the Portuguese are, yeah, and yeah. the Australians are, and the stories you guys, you know, uh, ran into over there. But, boys, I think I think we're at fifty minutes. I yeah. think I think I'm happy with. I think I'm happy. I think we gave an idea of what road we're going to go down. And trust me, guys, I need to reiterate. Yes, it's about football. But there will be times where I'm ranting about why a girl doesn't want to date me for 30 minutes. And somehow <laughs> I will tie it back we into football. We didn't even get into I your know, story of I last know. night. I know. That's the thing. <sighs> last night I was tooted and booted, suited and booted. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, was, I was out and about. And it wasn't even that bad. I had three drinks. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of my mates who may or may not be in the room as well, he was, he was having a great time. So, Damn. Um, Shout out Soji, I guess, if you guys want to go there, meet some new people. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, like I said, guys, I do want to reiterate that um, it's going to be a pod about everything and how, especially these two, because they played at a pro level, how they dealt with it. Because dating as a footballer is different to dating as a normal nine to five. <laughs> Partying as a footballer is different. You get to go in the VIP line at Alumbra <laughs> and you think you're the maddest cunt. Right. Never got into, never just walked into Lux. By the way, just want to put. put 
Uh, yeah, yeah I love that club, but I guess it's not, can't it's not get in Lux, for some reason. It's not Lux over, uh, anymore or overall or whatever, at, I guess. At some point, at one point, my, my mate was said, was told uh, only regulars only. And regulars. And my, <laughs> and, my, and my mate goes, We've been here six weeks in a row. You haven't let us in <laughs> once. How do I become a regular? I can't so wait to it. ask. He's like, did you ever pull the card? Don't answer this because I'm saving stuff. Yeah, did you ever yeah, pull yeah. the... Uh, no, um, oh, fuck. Just got, I got training tomorrow morning. Oh, no, I play a victory. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, I've got a bit <laughs> of a name. Funny stories about yeah, that I got, kind of stuff, got a bit yeah. of a name. But yeah, these boys, I'm telling you right now, guys, I promise you, I know I come across as wild... And have stories. Everyone says, oh, Jerome, you're so good at telling stories. Mine are nothing compared to what these boys have in store for you guys. And like I said, there's not too many podcasts or shows out there showing that side because they're scared of really just getting themselves in in trouble or just pissing someone off. But like I said, we're not going to go crazy, but these boys from their days in overseas playing football, we have some absolute crackers lined up for you guys. So... Make sure, guys, we're a new podcast. It's our first ep. Yeah, Get on board. Yeah. Show the love. Like the video on YouTube. It won't take long, I promise. Subscribe on YouTube. I'll even do it for you if you give me a YouTube login. And follow us on Instagram. Obviously, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, it'll be there as well. And guys, send in your questions to the Instagram page. Because we will answer pretty much whatever you ask unless, you know, it's going to get us in jail. Um, so send in the questions. We want to talk with you guys. We, we, we made a point when we started this to, to be like, we do want to connect with people if they want to find out things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, whatever you guys want to know, for sure. Because um, these boys are, you know, open books. Like, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna tell you. Also, just quick, few quick ones. Uh, Beyond Technique Football School, follow up. That's Rashes. Gavin to Football, that's Gavs. Coaching Academies, if you if you guys think your kid's the next superstar. Uh, Melbourne Foot Volley, get down. Sundays, 10.30, 9.30 for the girls. Morty Alec Beach. Better Mondays. Yeah, run come club. down for a run. Come down for a run. 8 a.m. every Sunday at Morty Alec Beach. Run slash walk club. You're more than welcome if you're not fit. If you haven't ran before, come down. People walk. Come, people bring their dog and their newborn babies, and yeah. it's a, it's just a, an easy going, nice way to start your Sunday. So it's all about down. building the community. That's what we're about. That's it. Yeah, not to be corny, guys, but like these communities don't. I mean, a few run clubs are popping up or whatever, but especially the foot volley does not exist in Melbourne. Yeah, we've been pioneer a lot of love. From it. Pioneer. So, good. guys, get down all skill levels. I'm only going to laugh at you. He won't. And um, What's our I, Insta handle? Have we decided yet? We're still trying to, trying to hack we'll Instagram. To yeah, we'll leave that because we want to pick the right name. But you guys will know it. I'll put it in the, 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 the description and all that. But you guys will know it. But, yeah, any questions, whatever... Message any of us. Lord Mahazi on TikTok. Jerome.music on TikTok. What's your TikTok? Gavin Denise. Gavin Denise. Still popping. Still, still popping. Growing, growing. Still going. We're all on Instagram as well. You'll find us. Go follow Gav, by the way. Yes. There's not enough following Gav. Yes. Need to, and follow his journey with his dad. He's got his dad running yeah, as well. Yeah. Which is That's a great little so, series. So good. So That's a good one. Get on to that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, boys. Good boys. first step. Remember what I told you, like, comment, subscribe, suited and booted. We will see you guys next week. Thank you very much.